waiting that the Lord has been waiting for our hearts to come together like they are and that he's been waiting because in that unity that the love of the Lord is released and the word of God says that our faith works by love and so he's been waiting for that unity it's not only here but it's happening we see the hard things going on all around us but it is happening in the hearts of others, other believers, other Christians, in the glow and, and in the body of Christ. He's been waiting because there's things that he wants to do. And the only way that they can come through and be accomplished is through our prayers. Okay? We, we need to be obedient in prayer. We need to be seeking him as to how to pray. What does he want done? so that he can accomplish the great things. In Jesus' name, amen. I had in my heart um, to pray safety over over this area and for all of us here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and I have this, again, I use prayers of much the word of God, but I, as we start, I would like to pray that over us if it's okay with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, you watch over your word and perform it. I thank you that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and we remain stable and fixed under the shadow of God Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. You are our refuge and our fortress. I say, no evil shall befall us, no accident shall overtake us, nor any plague or calamity come near our homes. You give your <clears throat> angels special charge over us, to accompany and defend and preserve us in all our ways of obedience and service. They are encamped around about us. Father, you're our confidence, firm and strong. You keep our feet from being caught in any trap or hidden danger. You give us safety and you ease our way. And Jesus is our safety. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, what I was getting in my spirit is there some hard places that the Lord is going to begin to break through? And not just, you know, in our life, but in our hearts. And those hard places that have held back um, the blessings, have held back us seeing our prayers sometimes um, get um, hindered, our prayers get blocked, and it's because sometimes we're carrying resentment, we're carrying pride, and we are, we're not aware, we're not aware of it. Pride is something that we really, if we could see it, we wouldn't be walking in it, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't see, we don't see the, the pride. But God is bringing it to light. And I just love the Lord because he's so gentle. And he'll show us an area and then he'll say, I want you to work on that. I want you to work on that attitude. Or, you know, he wants us to be able to bring those things to him. And sometimes um, we're in such a hurry, even with our prayers, that we don't take time to listen. We take a lot of time to speak and to tell him or make our request, but we need to take time to listen. Okay. When we finished um, our meeting in Fullerton, I remember um, Lynn spoke. She said, we need to move on. We just can't um, keep looking at the past, and we need to move on and God moved forward. I don't know if you remember saying that. Okay, as I was writing my notes, it's exactly what the Lord was speaking to me. He says, uh, we need to let go of the past in order to take on the new things. Sometimes we even have to let go of good things. You know, like she was saying about the meetings at the bowling alley, they were so good. <laughs> and we, we praise the Lord. It was just wonderful. But even that, because God's, not choosing to do things that way anymore. And so I have to adjust and agree with God. Another thing Lynn was saying, we need to agree with God's word, you know, whether it's for healing or for whatever we're doing. I have to get an agreement with what the Lord wants in order for it to succeed, to see the things come to pass. So we have to do it God's way. And we have to... Um, Meditate on the Word. Know what the Word says about that. We know that He wants healing for us. He's provided it for us. Okay? 
we know that that's his will. And so we can come confidently, we can come boldly. But you can't do it if we're holding on to resentment, if we're holding on to pride, if we're holding on to these things, unforgiveness. Okay, and it's so subtle. Because sometimes with unforgiveness, and if you've been hurt very badly, you feel like you're entitled to be um, have a bad attitude. <laughs> you're entitled because what they did to you was wrong. And it's true, it, it was wrong, but it's still our place to forgive. And the thing is, we have the power of God to help us to do that. We're not even expected to do it in our own strength. I know one thing that helped me a lot, because I had some people in leadership that I couldn't believe that some of the things happened, and so I got offended. And I didn't know that it was unforgiveness, but offense is, it's unforgiveness. But the Lord had me start praying for them. And at first it was just like for five minutes, I didn't, I didn't want to pray for them. <laughs> I didn't want to pray for them. But five, I took five minutes, and it was very a begrudging prayer to say, bless them, Lord. Be with them today, Lord. And it was where I could start. But it got to a point after a while, I was beginning to enjoy the prayer. And I started play, praying more blessings on them. And then I started, got to the place where I meant it from my heart. And you know, funny thing about when you've been offended by someone, you just kind of dread running into them. You, you dread seeing them. But what happened to me, there was a big convention in uh, Anaheim. And uh, they were there. And I saw them. And normally, the, the old Lil would have been wanting to hide somewhere. <laughs> I really wouldn't want to see them. I really, but I was so totally different. And I really attribute it to being obedient to pray because I was glad to see them. I approached them. I was able to talk to them, hug them. And really, I meant it from my heart that I wished them well. And so that's what God can do if we forgive. And then we can see things change. We're believing for a lot of great things for our families. We're believing for souls to come in. Um, it could be finances. It could be anything. I've, I've gone through that too, where if I get an attitude about my finances, I gradually get mad at God because this isn't happening or that. Um, it, it just dries up like the well without water because God. I, I don't believe God blesses that kind of an attitude. And as soon as you repent, you see the things change. You see things turn around. Amen. Amen. Um, hallelujah. And you know, when things get hard, that's a place where we can start um, getting resentful. Because, you know, we start looking at it. After all, God, I have served you so long. And haven't I been good, Lord? And we start having that wrong attitude. But the Lord um, isn't looking at our righteousness, at our goodness. He's looking at Jesus. Jesus in us. And He's willing, God is willing to do that work in us if we're willing to yield to the Holy Spirit. Um, so we have to let go of the past. Okay, and even the good things. And even the way things used to be. Okay, that don't work anymore. But they were good. He says in Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 19, if you want to turn there. remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Let's have your way, Holy Spirit. However you want this to go. 
you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, um, thank you. He's doing a new thing. Sometimes we desire, and I've been, I've been guilty of that. I had desired as a child, I was sharing testimony, uh, that my father would have been different, that he would have treated me in a more loving and a kind way. I had desired as a child that um, my mom would have been different and treated me different. But you know, it's some of the hard things sometimes that help to shape the person you are. You become a better person because of some of the things that... It's a work of God, it's a work of grace, but those things that we have um, resented and fought sometimes are the very things that begin to, to change us and to cause us to be a person like God wants us to be, to be conformed to the image of Christ. Okay. My mom, for one, um, she was tough on us. She was a tough lady, Rose, I can tell you. <laughs> Um, when we went through hard times and we hardly had, we didn't have very much. And so I remember getting ready for um, school and uh, I looked at what I had. We had gone to Goodwill, I had maybe three different things to wear and then I had like three pairs of socks. And I told my mom, I said, look, I said, this isn't going to work. There's only three pairs of socks. And I was feeling really down. I was feeling sorry for myself. And she said, no. She says, come here. And she walks me over to the sink. We had a sink and we had a scoreboard. And she says, this is what you do. You come home from school. You wash the pair that you wore. You hung, hung them up to dry. And then you wear your next pair. And you do this over and over. She, she wouldn't let you feel sorry for yourself. And actually, with me, it worked because I thought, what a good idea. <laughs> I, thought, I can do this, you know. <laughs> but, you know, you look now and you go, my gosh, kids have 15 pairs of shoes, and, you know. But it was part of, I mean, I learned. And she was a very good teacher. She taught us how to take care of things. And to this day, and I watch my sister, um, she can give away stuff that looks brand new and it's, you know, she's had it quite a while because we learn how to take care of things. Right. But it was instilled in us, you know. And, you know, it was a blessing from the Lord, but you were going to take care of it, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so, looking back, okay, it built some discipline in me and some strength, okay. And I didn't know at the time, but it was preparing me to cope with some of the things that were coming in the future. Like I didn't know she was going to pass away when she did. And, uh, <coughs> no self pity. <laughs> um, she was, I was only 12. And God carried us. I ended up um, having to drop school. And uh, it still touches me very deeply. Uh, my father quickly remarried and I got kicked out of the house. So, um, and it was because, and I still have problems with it, sometimes I didn't control my words, <laughs> didn't control my mouth. My father remarried and uh, <coughs> married a lady from Mexico and unfortunately they had a lot of different um, customs and the way they treated things. Well, here my mom had taught us how to take care of things and they came in and they just had bad manners and didn't take care of anything. So I told them, and they told my father, and my father said, well, if anybody's going, she's going. So I ended up, I lived a little, like a block away with my friend for a while, and then Rosa and I uh, later got an apartment together. But those things, see, it appeared that they were bad. I, I lived in a really rough neighborhood, and even though that looked you know, you say like Joseph got put in a pit and his brothers betrayed him. You know, I felt like my father had betrayed me. And it worked for good because it took me out of that environment. I had friends that were going to parties. I wasn't much of a party person. 
But I had friends that were going, and kids were getting shot at these parties, you know, and stuff like this. And it's like the Lord just removed me from there, even though I was working. Uh, it was still God teaching me the way I should go. And now, looking back, I'm grateful. Um, okay, God was faithful, and I could tell you many, many stories. But, you know, we haven't, we haven't arrived. I'm learning God's working on me. I wanted to read also um, 1 Corinthians 13, because, speaking of offenses, offenses are going are gonna to come your way. So, if anyone wants to help me and read it in the King James, I have the amplified. What verse? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verses... I think it's four. Let me get there. Uh, four and five. Okay. Verse four. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Verse five. Doth not behave itself unseemly, speaketh not her own, is but easily provoked, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Okay, from the Amplified in verse 5, it says, It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly, does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. It is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of an evil done to it and it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. So the temptation is gonna to come to get offended. And I mean, I can have that temptation every day. <laughs> It seems like there's opportunities every day yep. for us to get offended, amen? <coughs> and we need each other, you know. Um, when I'm going through something, I want to know that I can call a friend and that I can trust that friend to pray with me as if I'm struggling. And if I'm struggling in an area of getting offended, okay. Uh, James 5.16 says um, if we confess our sins one to another, Hallelujah, I have to go there. It says, confess to one another, therefore your faults and your slips. Your, your false steps and your offenses and your sins. And pray for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I shouldn't cry because then I can't see what I mean. <laughs> okay, so that power is available. God tells us how when we reach out to a brother or sister. You know what? That's also an area where it brings down the pride in us because we have to reach out and we feel that we're falling short and it just that I just see the power of God come in there so mightily when I say I'm having a struggle with this. Can you pray? I got offended at this. Can you pray? And then we see the power of God. Hallelujah. We see the power of God work. So we can we were able to forgive others. We call on others and it increases the power. There's also Matthew 18, 18 and 19, one of my favorite. You Judy, would you like to read in the King James, sure. Matthew 18, 18 and 19? Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Uh, again, I, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, was teaching, is touching, 
I'm having a hard time seeing anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the power is increased when we agree, and there's harmony between us. You know, it's just like Lynn was saying, we're going to agree, we're going to pray for Cindy this way, like this is already done. We all got an agreement. There was great harmony, and and that's power, okay? Because we don't have one person praying one way and another person saying, well, I don't think that's the way we should pray, you know? And, and then you bring doubt and unbelief in there, and I believe, you know, when there's harmony, God can really work with that. So that's a powerful prayer of unity, okay? So we want, we want to walk in love, so there's no um, blockage to our prayers. We want to forgive so that we're not hindering. Ephesians um, says, uh, Ephesians 4.16, it says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Okay. It means deal with it. Deal with it right away because you take that to bed with you and then you meditate on it and it grows. It gets to be a bigger problem than if you, if you deal with it. Okay, and most of us, like me, <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to look at it. I was hurt or whatever. The pride, again, takes in. But if we, if we deal with it, confess it first to God. Repent of it first to God. And then ask him for the grace to share with the person what you're feeling. And then you'll see, you'll see the power of God work. And you'll see the power of God change the other person. You know, um, I've, had, I've had that opportunity sometimes with my own kids. And instead of insisting on my own way, you need to do this this way, I back off and I say, okay, God, here's the situation. And I allow you to work in their lives. I forgive them, and I, I'm not. Gonna, and a lot of times, you know, you don't need to confront them about everything, but you need to forgive, so that you don't stay angry, because that's your connection with God. Hallelujah. God doesn't leave you for that, but your prayers are more readily answered. Hallelujah. You keep that fellowship with the Lord. You don't lose that. You, that's precious to you. God gave it to you. Amen. And you don't want to lose that. Amen. So, okay. And then afterwards, you don't want to carry guilt, condemnation, or fear. You know, like things from my past. I had a real hard time overcoming the condemnation. My sister knows. I went, I mean... You know, I had come to the Lord. I had a wonderful um, time surrendering to God, and it was wonderful, glorious. And yet I had this condemnation, and I would, you know, wake up with it. And I, I remember, I, I, just, I, I would hear the verse, Romans 8, 1, says there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Okay, and it was like I couldn't get a hold of it. I knew it up in my head but in my heart it just like I felt somehow like I still needed to be punished in order for me to get over this to be able to get a hold of God's blessing to be able to get break through the condemnation somehow I needed to be punished and that's not that's not the word of God but that's how I felt and the guilt and condemnation my biggest thing was um, feeling the guilt because I knew about the Lord growing up and that I didn't follow Him like I should. I went years without, years ignoring Him. And I knew better. And then, you know, came the time for me to raise my kids the way they should go. I wasn't doing any of that. And so I, even after I came to the Lord, um, still the condemnation, but I meditated on that word. Romans 8, 1. And I kept meditating on it. And over a period, a few months, it took a few months, I woke up one morning and I realized, I am forgiven. 
I am totally forgiven. I'm totally accepted. Hallelujah. God loves me. I'm forgiven. And it was like, whoa, such a day of rejoicing. It was such a breakthrough. But see, it's the Word of God. It's a hammer. And you meditate on it and you speak it out of your mouth. And even if at first it doesn't seem like anything's happening, you're chipping away at that stronghold over your mind. You know, I shared about a stronghold is like a house of thoughts. And you get up with it on your head, you sleep with it on your head, you walk around and your actions, your attitudes are uh, controlled by that. So I was controlled by condemnation. And when it broke, when I got free, I was praising God because it was like such a revelation, such light that came in and, and drove away the darkness. That was a lie of the devil. Okay. The enemy has lots of arguments. If you've ever noticed, like, you can be um, saved and completely forgiven. And they'll tell you, but do you remember when you did this? Do you remember when you said that? And he reminds you. And that's an argument against the knowledge of God, like it says in 2 Corinthians. Okay, so those arguments are going to come, whether you're standing for healing, whether you're standing for someone's salvation, um, whatever it is, the devil's going to bring you reasons why it will not happen for you. It can't happen for you. You're not good enough. Okay, you haven't served the Lord um, long enough. You know, I mean, he just... And um, so he keeps feeding us lies. But the Bible says, greater is he that sent me than he that's in this world. So he has, God has a power through the word of God and we can speak it to break those strongholds. And you can have more than one, you know, uh, it could be about, you know, your worthiness. It could be about a person that you're, you know, you have fear of or whatever. God can break the strongholds. And I just encourage you to use the word of God and to use it as a hammer for your breakthrough. Okay. The Word of God says in Psalm 119, 165, it says, Great peace have they that love your law, and nothing shall offend them. Hallelujah. We haven't arrived, but we're pressing towards that mark. Amen. And see, the enemy knows how to press your buttons. He knows what will trigger your, your anger your self-pity. He knows because he's the one that made you feel that in the first place. Okay? So he knows how to discourage you. Amen? So, But he's a liar. And God has stripped him of his power. When Jesus went to the cross, in Colossians it tells us he stripped, he made a show of Satan openly. Wow. He took, he stripped him of all his power. And so he's given, God has given us that authority. Amen? Amen? So we should have confidence. The Bible says boldness because of what Jesus did for us. It's not, you know, because we're so wonderful and deserving. No, it's because of what Jesus did for us that he gave it back to us. And we can't just lay back and let the enemy run over us. We're in a warfare, okay? And the warfare, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, he says, is not against flesh and blood. And it's against um, powers and principalities, okay? And spiritual wickedness in the high places. So those things are operating against us, sometimes through our families, sometimes through our friends, unfortunately. But they don't recognize, oftentimes, that the enemy is using them to bring you discouragement or to confirm something negative about yourself. Uh, the enemy will do that. Yeah. And so he uses people. So we have to be alert and that's why one reason we don't have to get offended. We recognize where it's from. You know, we know that we're in a warfare. I'm not offended, but I am going to take authority over this. I'm not going to allow it to, 
tear me down. I've spent too much time breaking through, getting through, <laughs> and breaking off the old stuff to allow you know one situation or one thing to come against me and bring me down again. I don't want to be back to that point where I was so distressed and discouraged. Is it? Yeah, that's where the enemy wants us. So I want to encourage you in the Lord. Okay, we have to be we have to be tough to stay out of offenses. Okay, we have to put up a wall against them. Okay, and that we love the person, but we don't have to tolerate the enemy's attacks. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I have found, the more that I practice this, the other person begins to come under conviction, and God begins to work in them, and they start to change without us having to force it or talk to them or anything. It just, the, the people start changing. And so we don't have to enforce our our will on them. God will work. Amen. Okay. Um, other thing I want to say is we have to stop comparing ourselves with each other. Okay. Some things I will never do as well as other people. I know. Okay. But you are gifted in one way or another. And we need to accept ourselves. Be happy with yourself. Be happy with what you enjoy doing. But don't expect others to feel the same way. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, if you love gardening, you know, praise God. But other people may not be very good at it, like me. And their yard may not look so pretty. But instead of comparing myself, I should appreciate their gift and build them up in the Lord. And then pray for God to send somebody to help me. <laughs> you know? Amen. But whatever it is. We need to accept each other and the, the gifts and the callings that are in one another. Because then I'm going to get blessed. Okay, like, um, you know, when someone sings, I just love to hear that. Um, that's not my gift. But, you know, how wonderful to have people around us that have that gift. Amen. Okay. Um, some of us learn easily and others... Um, like me, sometimes I have to learn hard work. <laughs> okay. And so also careful what you speak over your own situation. Words are very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding sometimes saying nothing and withholding complaining does wonders. Okay. Um, you are, in so doing, you're letting go of the situation and you're totally trusting God. Okay. Because... When you're quiet, God can work. We block His work sometimes with our own words. Okay, I I used to have a time when I think it was during um, Women's Glow when I was in Covina, and every time I was going, I would say, "Oh Lord, every time we have these meetings, I'm so disorganized, and I don't have anything done, and it, it was getting worse every week. It was even worse." And so the Lord said, "What are you speaking?" Mm. Caught myself, and he says, "Well, what do you need to do?" You know, and I said, "Okay." So I started confessing, "Lord, I'm so organized. I thank you. I'm always ready, and I'm ready on time, and I, I get things done. Thank you, Lord." Well, it took a little while to turn around. I had done a lot of damage with my words already, but it works. You know, pretty soon, what? I was on top of it. You know, <laughs> but our words have power. Okay. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How's my time? Am I okay? Okay. 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 Um, so, it's not a matter of being better than anybody else. But it's a matter of pulling our strengths together to serve God. So, we need to try to help one another when we see the other one struggling in an area. That's love. Okay, we need to determine in our hearts to love, regardless of the circumstance. And that's what's important in the body of Christ. Instead of criticizing and condemning, we need to remember, you know, we don't, we don't have it all together either. We need that grace too. And so wherever I'm falling short, I'm hoping somebody comes along and gives me a hand. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Acts 17, 28, and that was Psalm 139. 
um, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Acts 17.28 says, in him we live and move and have our being. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 11 says, we're not sufficient in ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stop right there. I thank you so much for inviting me. I love you. And it's a blessing to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Lily, when you first came up there, I felt the Lord speaking right away about you when, when uh, someone said your name. And uh, he showed me that he saw to it or gave you the name Lily because the Lily is such a precious flower, such a, a sensitive thing that is given to people who need encouragement, who need comfort, uh, who need blessing. And that, that was going to be how he was going to be in you for other people. And I wrote some of it down, so I'll give you that. Enjoy the journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Lily, what was that last scripture you gave us? You were talking First Corinthians 14, 7, I think it was. Thank you. You're welcome. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's... Yeah, not sufficient in ourselves. Second Corinthians 4, 7. Oh, 4, 7. Yeah, 3, 3, 11. Sorry. Thank you so much, Lil. Awesome word. Great encouragement, good reminder. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Lil will be glad to pray with anybody who wants ministry. Um, we can minister over here. Next month, we have Thanksgiving. And we enter his courts with praise. And we're going to have Priscilla Lexon Hale. Come and teach us on flags, and her husband will be here to lead worship. So we're dismissed for now, except for the prayer time. And um, I bless you all with every good and perfect gift that comes from the Father of Lights. Father, we praise you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the word of encouragement that we've received this day. We ask, Lord God, that you would seal it with the blood of Jesus, that we will remember those truths as we need them to come to our remembrance. Holy Spirit, you are faithful and we bless you. And thank you for that. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you that you love each of us thank so much. Lord. Yes, Lord. Be with us, Lord, as we leave. Continue the healing work that you have begun in each one. Yes. Continue the provision that you've begun for each one. Give us vision that you might provide for that. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that you go with us wherever we go. And that you tell us what to say and that we take the territory where our feet trump. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Be blessed.